Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audiblepodcast.com slash sorgatronmedia. Over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player. I'm getting awesome! You're getting awesome! We're getting awesome! Yeah, that's what I said now! Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast number 62. We are back again here in studio. You see, we got a, 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 a if you're on the video, you see we got a, a wall full of faces behind us. One wall of them's eating. Faces. Hi, Rob. <laughs> uh, there he is. Rob, the, well, where'd you go? You just, <laughs> left, <laughs> just left the crunch. <laughs> Rob Taylor Crater, how you doing? Hello. I'm, uh, I'm good. I've got some, uh, some Chex Mix and some raspberry tea. Coming to you from my luxurious, uh, Hilton Suite in uh, luxurious Baltimore. Fantastic. It, the Baltimore is like the focus point of everybody this month, uh, it, it seems. So so, so you got to come back with some tips for when I go later this month. So. Okay. And uh, on the couch, which is not in Baltimore, hey. Chachi of Chachi Says.net. Hi, Mike. Hi. How are you? He calls me by my first name. Good. How are you? <laughs> okay, yes. Good. <laughs> Moving on. Lovely uh, to see you. Uh, hi. <laughs> He's been learning about the platypus. It's amazing. The platypi. Platypi. I'm yes. sorry. Hey, Chachi, can you uh, can you give us the call of the platypus? I can't. I can't make that noise. <laughs> He'll hurt himself if he tries. Yeah, and I don't have the video up. <laughs> and joining us tonight from from usually Baltimore. Oh. He's also still in Baltimore. Justin Kanaki, how you doing? Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh, Justin of the the wildly popular baristas show. Director. It is wild. It is popular. It is also wildly popular. It's like uh, chocolate, peanut butter, and um, coffee. Uh, coffee? foreplay. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. But sometimes nerdy foreplay, which is all right. And also joining us, uh, a member of the cast. Uh, you may know him as Sam from the Breistas. Sean Starkey, how you doing? Doing well, sir. Thank you for having me. Also, not in Baltimore. I think you're. We just we just kind of alternated back and forth, didn't we? What? We did. We just sat boy, girl, boy, girl. Yes, right. Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, oh, Pittsburgh. Right. Yes. So, so I guess, you know, first, you know, okay, the breezes are coming up. Uh, the first, the first clip from, from the next, uh, arc came up. Uh, tell, tell us, uh, for those that haven't, maybe didn't catch it last time, what is the breezes about, Justin? Well, Mike, I'm glad you asked. The Baristas <laughs> is a web based sitcom, which you might know better as a situation comedy. Ooh. Uh, and the situation, which we're comeditizing, is uh, that of a cafe in the city of Pittsburgh. It's a real cafe staffed by fictional people. And it's called Affogato for both real and fiction. And sometimes it's funny. Awesome. Um, and, of course, this was spun off of uh, Something to be Desired, which ran for how many seasons? Yeah, we did Something to be Desired in Pittsburgh from 2003 till 2009, so about six years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I moved to Baltimore the cast stayed in Pittsburgh, and then we wisely said, why not keep doing this, but from a transatlantic distance? So we did, and now uh, we do the baristas uh, as a weekly show when I can get to Pittsburgh to shoot it. Or, in the very near future, when someone named Mike Sorg can shoot it in Pittsburgh. Who's See what we're doing guy? here, Mike? Who's that guy? Who's that I don't guy? Know. Um, <laughs> so, so the first season, the first, the, the, we have the season. We're in it. We're arc. in the first season. We're yeah. still in so. the first season, of course. But the first arc, you, we, 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 you took a break. We took a break, uh, for a few months there. Um, and so what, what did, what did you, how did the first, uh, uh, uh arc kind of go off? You know, this was a Kickstarter project that went out. Yeah. We, and, we uh, had the uh, blessing of our fans from something to be desired to get a uh, spin off of that show going. Thanks to Kickstarter, we kick started the baristas into the first, uh, 11 episodes. Sorry, shut chicken tacos. Sorry, Whoa. chicken tacos. Ooh, chicken tacos. Can, uh, can I have some? Are those Baltimore <laughs> chicken tacos or Pittsburgh chicken tacos? I think Rob has some chicken tacos. Okay. We could just meet in Harrisburg and have a smorgasbord of tacos. Yes. That sounds like a delicious idea. <laughs> Doesn't it? You ride the platypus there, Chachi. Yes. <laughs> we'll do what we can. Uh, but oh. yeah, so we started off with the uh, first 11 episodes of the show, established the characters, established the fact that the cafe was in what we'd like to call transition. And then we took a break while we filmed the next nine episodes. And uh, the first preview of those next nine episodes is up right now, in which the cafe is under new ownership, which will only lead to tragedy. Of course. Not that I'm giving anything away. 
because tragedy is pretty much what happens in every episode of the show. Like these characters never have a good day. So excellent. And, and you know what? They don't. <laughs> I I've never like. I guess I nobody never, gets a victory. Yeah, I never. I guess I never really noticed it because I'm too yeah. busy laughing at their misery. But yeah, <laughs> no one ever has a good day on that show. That's good. Justin, can you, I have you, a victory at some point, please? That'd be nice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I would Sean like that, really. who plays Sam, uh, his character in the last episode of the uh, of the first half of the season was both fired and lost his girlfriend. And things can only look up, you would think, but they probably won't. Yeah, sorry, Sean. You're not allowed to have a good day. <laughs> you know Story of my life. It's all right. It just makes me feel more at home. <laughs> it's in their contract, actually. Misery. You know what? Actually, Sean, uh, do you want to uh, explain how the uh, the baristas has come to represent your life? Oh yeah. Um, I, I mostly blame my wife for this. Uh, it's she asks every time I go in. She's like, "Does Justin call you ahead of time and just kind of track how your world works?" Because when I first started shooting in Something to be Desired, it was, you know, a guy who sits at home, has a horrible relationship with his girlfriend, and plays Warcraft all day, who works in a coffee shop, which was exactly what I was cast for. And so it was very typecasting. And then since we've moved on to someone who, you know, was broken up with that girlfriend and trying to hobble his life back together, who, you know, wants to wildly figure out exactly what to do with his life. And that's kind of where I'm at now. So it's it's... It's fun to be written for exactly for what you're doing. Nothing is easier to act with either. If, so if you wake up today, yeah, okay, perfect, you're in character. Go put on a bandana and have fun. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost feel afraid at this point. Like, whatever I write for Sean is going to happen to him, so I'm afraid to write anything that's too violent or too nefarious. Cupcakes, but if, Cupcakes yeah. will rain from the sky for me. That's Do, do me the favor, sir. No stunts. No, we won't do that. <laughs> no, no stunts. No flamethrower? No, no wire fighting? Come on. Now, well, like the real lifetime that you walked into work and found out that you were unemployed? <laughs> yeah. That was a good day. Nothing better than, well, Happy New Year. I'm um, here to pick up my check. Yeah, we're closed. Uh, I'm sorry? What do you mean? Where's my paycheck? And, and a job. That would be nice. Thank you. Just, oh, now, we, we were going to wait to tell you till you know, later. We closed two days ago. Everything's in boxes already. Yeah. Including the paycheck. Yeah, we're the life of an actor is not an easy life, Sean. Uh, no, but we sign up for this. We're we're masochistic in a sense, and bless us all. So, Justin, why don't you just write him a uh, he wins the lottery storyline? That would be a good idea, actually. I mean, um, especially because <laughs> in real on. life, uh, the cafe that we film in, Affogato, uh, some of you may know this. Afogato is actually for sale right now. So if, hypothetically, I wrote a storyline in which Sean's character won money, Great. and then in real life Sean himself won money, he could then buy the cafe that we shoot this fictitious show in, and then reality would just converge and implode on itself. Right. You're like dividing by zero. And I get 15%. <laughs> of zero, which we would pay you in platypi. Yes! Yeah. God, this day is awesome. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so, Justin, uh, tell us. Uh, let's say, you, you, how how's the feedback well, been so far from that first arc, and uh, and how are we applying that for the the second half here? It's interesting because, uh, well, so after the first arc finished up, the first uh, eleven episodes, we had a lot of feedback from real life baristas who. Um, maybe unfortunately see themselves in some of these characters mm -hmm. like if you've been in a cafe before you probably have a, an era of familiarity with these characters and these storylines but we've had a lot of our uh, cast members around the pittsburgh area being recognized in starbucks when they walk into them now so we know that starbucks is watching us which is cool uh we also know which uh actors or which characters the audience is really reacting to in a positive way and that's interesting because uh four of our cast members so far have moved on and I don't mean like they've said, screw this, we're leaving the show for good and you're a horrible man, though they do sometimes say that. But these people left because they had jobs in other cities. So uh, a lot of the characters that our audience has gotten used to over a few years may or may not still be part of the show by the end of these next nine episodes. So everything is a shakeup. You never know what you're going to get when you come to Affogato, including new faces, new people. It's like Walking Dead. You never know who's going to become the zombie next. It's true. We do kill in indiscriminately on the show, so it's never my choice. It just sort of happens. 
<laughs> awesome. Awesome. Mm, coffee is on. Uh, the other interesting thing to say that I should throw out there is so, yes, in real life, the cafe that we film in may or may not be sold uh, at the end of this month. We have filmed most of the first seven of these nine episodes. And do you know why we haven't filmed those last two? Because we don't know where we're filming them yet. That's the interesting <laughs> part. So either the cafe is saved and life goes on, or the cafe is sold and we find a new location. But in some way, art is mirroring life is mirroring art right now. And this is, I mean, you know, for, you know, you, you can be called kind of a veteran at web series at this point. You've been doing them so damn long before it was the cool thing to do. I think I'm not sure it's ever been the cool thing to do, Mike. And it certainly hasn't been the profitable thing to do, but it's almost the creatively fulfilling thing to do. Almost, okay. Almost, it's very close. Yeah. So, uh, if if you include staying up till four a.m. trying to rearrange people's schedules so you can get them to film a reshoot of something that went horribly wrong a week ago, that, mm-hmm. my friend, is creative mm-hmm. sustenance. You're welcome. <laughs> it's not even your fault this time. Shockingly, no. no. Also, this season in the in the uh, filming. Not only do we have four cast members leaving, we've had three who've come down with some sort of terminal illnesses. It's been awesome. Uh, there was the day that Sean himself um, had to go to the hospital to get hooked up to tubes, just for the hell of it, really, I think. Um, I Sean, think you okay now? was important. Just silly me. It's, it was, a, you know, it's a hobby he has, breathing. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had one of our actresses decide she was going to collapse in the middle of a shoot. Yet, yeah, I'll tell you what, to her uh, to a testimonial, to her professionalism, she completed the co-stars side of that scene before she passed out that was impressive to me to watch because she's on the side of me as i'm filming sinking to the ground and her co-star is just sort of keeping a level eye line as though she's still standing there it was really impressive to watch and kind of alarming and then uh someone else threw his back out and couldn't stand up so unless we wanted to film him on a stretcher we had to work around that too so live theater has nothing on stage performances (laughs) that can never be executed i am never working on the show ever uh, if we schedule you, you'll probably get hit by a crane. I know. So. <laughs> Is that get written in? How does that work? Man, I... We'll I, use I, it. Oh, trust me, yeah. I am, uh, injury prone enough. Like, yeah, it I sounds like this show is enough uh, danger for you just sitting in a chair. <laughs> yeah, so don't, exactly. So don't overextend. Yeah, I, yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna have to pass. Yeah. <laughs> Before you now, even uh, offer. It's funny, too, also, that Sean, who is on the show as a comedian... Uh, playing the character of Sam. Uh, this is not Sean's normal way to express himself. He usually does that through the words of Shakespeare, Sean. Yeah. And and how's your Shakespeare side of life going? Um, it's it's going well. We just opened up Macbeth in Monroeville, and it's being received very well. We got another weekend of that coming up next weekend, so I will be out there. Shockingly enough, this this time around, due to uh, health issues. Uh, I wasn't in the show, but we, uh, we're we still out there. We're still going strong, and uh, we've got that in... That's going now. We've got Twelfth Night coming up in October, so it's, uh, it's a good year for the Bard. It is, and hopefully you'll be uh, on your feet enough to portray a character or two in the very near future. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. I, I'm finally off the steroids, so no more you know, throwing cars at, at you know, <laughs> fans of, yeah. of military personnel trying to break into my establishment. So... So, so that's good, but we'll see what goes on. Please don't hulk out in the middle of Twelfth Night and just you know, throw, throw puck across the stage or something. Be bad. Uh, you, you say bad. I say noteworthy. That's true. That would get you reviewed in the CP, I think. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Whole way to the Sorry. police station. <laughs> Now another another thing that's come up is I, I know uh, it, it seems like half of the, half of the cast has ended up in this uh, some big movie I hear co- is coming here in Pittsburgh. So, some, just this some, little so this little, little thing film. called the Dark uh, Magnus Rex I think it's called. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, Magnus Rex. That's the sequel to um, Magnus. Just Magnus. I think it was called Magnus. Magnus He's, begins. Yeah, <laughs> Magnus Junior. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's our blue harvest moment right here but uh i think almost all the cast members perhaps except sean starkey who was probably incapacitated when they did a casting call uh have ended up on the set of the dark knight rises 
So when that movie finally does come out, look for most of your favorite baristas characters as glorified extras, as SWAT team members, as uh, I believe uh, Rick Hertzig, who plays Glenn, is going to be a priest in a yeah. scene. We'll see how that goes. Awesome. Um, I know a lot of them are going to be in, I think everybody in the city is going to be in the football scene this yeah. weekend. Mike, are you part of that? Oh, I'm there. I am there. Chachi's going. Yes, I will We're be bringing there. Wrestle Fan from Texas along with us, and nice. I think my brother's coming too. We're gonna uh, go. for, those, for those who don't know how this works, though, this is the dead of summer. And what yes. was the uh, what, what did the call call for? Uh, the, Fall. The, yeah, it's like, oh, this is football season. So dress with coats, no shorts or anything like yeah. that. Uh, bring in a bit, something you can change out of quick when we're between uh, uh, shots and and bring an umbrella to stay out of the sun. Yeah, but they'll be free food. I hope Giveaways. they're misting you. I hope they just have a dirigible filled with water they keep exploding over the stadium <laughs> because that's the only way we're going to make it well, through this. I'm excited because they're filming downtown. Mm-hmm. And I can see the street they're filming on from my cube at work. So have you been like uploading photographs to Gawker they, or anything? They haven't started filming yet. That starts next week. Okay. So... I'm they, excited. It's, there, the videos popped up the other day of the uh, of the big prison break scene uh, oh. where there's everybody fighting on the steps and there's Batman and Bane uh, right, right. taking it out and, and choreographing and everything. It's pretty tremendous. And also the uh, the Dark Knight Rises uh, uh, bat signal on the Highmark building is pretty tremendous. I don't. I, I'm. I'm not sure that's actually the signal from the movie. I think that's like Pittsburgh paying homage to the bat signal. Well, no, 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 I, I understand. No. This is uh, something they do. And, and here's a picture of it here for you on video. Um, and we were it's something they do for uh, every city that they film Batman in. They put up a bat signal during the filming. Oh, really? Yeah, it's yes. just... Uh, so Batman knows where to go? The real yeah, Batman? Exactly. So Christian Bale doesn't get lost getting out from the airport. Exactly. <laughs> when they so air drop private jet from that dirigible. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we went down there, and we, but judging by this picture, we were dead wrong about where that was coming yes. from. <laughs> um John in the chat said to get a big coat and line it with ice packs. Ooh, it's not a bad idea. But we're going to be there for 12 hours, so yeah. I don't know how it's going to work out. So, the well, magic of movies, Mike. Enjoy that. Yes, and I'm learning. I'm learning firsthand. Of course, Brees is the first time I've, aside from our our our, our, our infamous high school project, this is the first time I've worked with uh, with with fiction like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's been interesting to see the process. Uh, it's uh, podcasting is a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> as i can see um but but it's been it's been really interesting to learn along the way and how much goes into it and and, and you know and this is one of those sort of uh uh you, you know the crew the crew is everybody on hand kind of things we don't have somebody that's you know that dedicated to the script dedicated to lighting or anything everybody makes something work and, my god and, we probably should Mike. And, yeah Goodbye. yeah probably probably i would love to get to that point someday but you know i'd also like an intern for this kind of thing so <laughs> True. <laughs> but i will say that uh after having done stbd for six years and been nominated for awards and translating that to the baristas now where we're starting to pick up our momentum you know shake off the rust a little bit from having not done this for a few years Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. one of the things that's really rewarding to me as the director and maybe sean can speak about this too is honestly the cast just really seems to enjoy the characters they're playing and they seem to enjoy the give and take amongst (laughs) the cast members as we're filming like it's just a very positive vibe on the set and uh, I, I feel good knowing that the cast doesn't hate each other because I think I've given them uh, ample opportunities to do so, and especially to hate me over the years. And they have yet to actually call me horrible names to my face yet, or each other. That's because you're nice to us. I mean, when, once you start cracking the whip, then it's like behind your back that grumble, grumbles, Justin Konacki, grumble, grumble. You know? Until I'm paying you in advance, I really can't crack any whips. So all I can do now is feed you and give you occasional massages. I, I'm excited for both of those on our next meeting, Justin. I mean, uh, your massage will be deferred. They will not happen immediately. They'll oh, happen when uh, I, the I, banana oh. boat oil arrives. Is there a line we have to? Is Ooh. there like a, a number we have to take? How does this work? We could do like a massage train. I think is the way to handle that. You know, like the massage version of Human Centipede, but good for kids. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, that, that is a fantastically crafted sentence. <laughs> As opposed to Human Centipede, which might have created kids. I'm not sure yet. So. I'm wondering what? if they're going to come out with a Human Centipede, the coloring book. Wait, That's hold on, I'm... hold on, stop. Time out. Time out. How would a Human Centipede... No, I... no we can't explain we, it we on the show. We can't even have this we conversation. We can't explain it on the show. That's for Crap. Google to figure out. It's, oh. it's on you. We're, we're, the, we're not going to teach the kids about the Human Centipede. What kind of people would have kids the Human Centipede? <laughs> 
Evil. Two girls, one sippy cup. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right, we got to move on. All right, move on, move on. I, I think, I, I think on that point, we need to go ahead to the safe, safe news. Oh, so if you guys want to hang out and chime in, okay, let's see what's safe. I'm gonna be ill. <laughs> Uh, Chachi, I, yeah. I, I, did, did, I don't know. You you submitted a lot. Hey, Justin. <laughs> yes, so Justin. I, I have a question for you. You have a dog. <laughs> I have a dog. I'm not sure where this is going, but so far so good. This is yes, going to loop back the platypus again, is how, it? No. How many times have you walked through your house at night and thought, man, if my dog blew, uh, glowed in the dark, I could find him? I thought you were going to say how many times I walked in my house and thought, man, what if my dog tried to kill me? No, um, no. I've never had that thought, by the way. Yeah, me either. But apparently, uh, South Koreans have created a dog that glows in the dark. I've heard about this. This doesn't sound good. What? It, it, it's, it's in the notes, but it was on Gizmodo. But they, uh, they cloned a dog and genetically modified it so it lights up when you put it under special light. It's like a dog for raving. Yeah, pretty much. And apparently, you can turn this feature on and off. <laughs> By clapping? A switch on the dog? <laughs> no, I don't yeah. understand this. No, it's, it's through the use of a, a, a specific medicine. But yeah, you, either you, <coughs> either you this, give this them... This is a dog for raves. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you give them the medicine, or you don't give them the medicine... And the dog glows or now, doesn't glow how, accordingly. How are they accomplishing this? I have no idea. <laughs> LED lights. Uh, maybe they, they no, it, let a dog it, with the Lunesta moth. But apparently it, this is supposed to be really useful for finding cures for human diseases. And I don't know how. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it demonstrates... I, I hate to drop the, re- the realism bomb. I do this too much. but um, <laughs> No, it's all right. Go on, Rob. Put us back on the rails. Uh... And- being able to do this kind of thing is much of a silly joke as it is. It also demonstrates our ability to manipulate um, DNA, stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Also, and, uh, it's very hard to cure diseases in the dark, Chachi. <laughs> oh, jeez, look at look at the glowy dog. That's really you. interesting. But as as anybody who's ever had to fix anything will tell you, like you you figure out how to fix like the really easy stuff, and then you use that knowledge to fix the much more difficult things. Okay. But I, I would like to also point out the comments on this article are all uh, light puns. Oh, jeez. Uh, like, like, for instance, I thought dogs were super smart. This one doesn't seem too bright. Uh, oh. And then there's another one a few down that, uh, I don't know, I've kind of taken a shine to them. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean... Uh, oh, we could call him Sparky. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that that I wanted to touch on, because, you know, I always get upset when I when I trip on my dog in the dark, because I can't see him, because he doesn't glow, which doesn't happen. I don't get upset with my dog because I trip on him, because I can see him, but... You know what's got me upset, Chachi? What's that, Mike? AT&T. What about AT and T? AT and T. Yes, I know. I'm the I'm the I'm the sucker with the unlimited plan with AT and T. Rob, you still got one For too, right? For now, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we all laughed. We all laughed with reckless abandon when Chachi got throttled for watching five gigabytes of, of uh, Netflix who has, in two who weeks. Who has the last in laugh two now? Weeks. All right, go ahead and laugh, sir. <laughs> AT&T says, uh, in, I believe it's October 1st, they're going to start throttling the top 5% users of their unlimited plans. But what is what do they consider the top five percent? The the top the basically you're all in a ranking, kind of like on Foursquare when you're in a ranking amongst your friends. Uh, how much Netflix you watch puts you in a ranking uh, with all the rest of the people still on the unlimited plans they're grandfathered into on their iPhones, and those five top five percent, lucky you, are going to get throttled. I feel like though uh, this is like one of those things where. If you look at the total number of AT&T users, you and I are not in the top five. Right. Yeah, yeah. So who is going to get this? Or this, this is for the people who are like not like not abusing quote unquote, but as far as like fair share of the inner tubes, they are abusing, and that it's just like nonstop streaming HD craziness. Now wait a minute, but isn't like like you know Chachi experienced with his unlimited plan with uh, with T-Mobile? And don't we have the same issue where it's really five gigabytes regardless of how unlimited they say it is? 
I don't know. Is that a thing with AT&T? I thought that was a thing. And then they started throwing you at that point. So is this, you know, is everybody else below that going to get thrown? Are those people going to get thrown beyond that? What's your, what's your, I, I know we've had this talk before, but what's your average, uh, your, your numbers? How much, how many gigaboobies are you taking a month? Um, I, I haven't <laughs> checked, uh, uh, lately, but, oh, uh, I, I can bring it up for sure. Uh, but no, I, I'm, I'm usually, uh, hovering up towards two gigabytes a month. Yeah, me too. I mean, but, <laughs> I don't even do streaming content, but it's around two a month. And, uh, I've yeah. never, ever gotten around five. Yeah. Oh, no, not even close. But, but, <laughs> you know, I'm around Wi Fi a lot. I'm not Which. watching Netflix on my 3G. It's those people in Nebraska who don't have Wi Fi. Oh, the Nebraskians. Do they even have 3G out in Nebraska? Do they have phones in Nebraska? <laughs> do they have motorized vehicles in Nebraska? Wow. Sorry. I'm pretty sure they do. No? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a uh, <laughs> a related comment on all this. Okay. The Nebraska may I, may part. I throw it out there. It has nothing to do with Nebraska. Okay. Actually. Then go for it. But it has to do with uh, phones and saving money. And if you guys care or not, but would like to save money, I found something kind of cool today that I'm, I think is legit. Uh, if you go to the um, financial blog getrichslowly.org, uh, it's all like ways to save money, like uh, budgeting tips and crap like that. But the cool thing they have up today is how to save on your cell phone plan with secret no contract deals. And apparently, you don't actually need a contract to have a cell phone plan, which a lot of people don't know. So if you go in and you tell them you will pay cash for the phone, you don't get that nifty discount when you first start up. But while they jack you at the beginning and you pay a lot of money for your phone up front, you are contract free. So you can leave whenever. There's mm -hmm. no penalty. And in fact, over the course of a year, you'll actually save on average at least 60 bucks, if not more. And you can leave whenever the hell you want to. Yeah, that's been a thing for a while, but it, but it, when you put that in perspective, you're paying like four or five hundred dollars sometimes for something like an iPhone. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and doesn't the iPhone start at like six hundred dollars? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, this may not be an awesome deal for like your top of the line equipment, but I think people mm -hmm. who are trying to save a little extra cash, uh, it's not a bad idea, especially if they're yeah. going to jack you over the long run. If you if you're just trying to say, especially if you can. Uh uh, hop on the Ebays or something and buy like a not necessarily brand new or not necessarily top of the line feature phone mm -hmm. and just take it in. And, and yeah, in fact, yeah, if you don't even need to buy the phone there, you're set. Yeah. Just get a no contract plan and ta-da. That, exactly. that is something that we've done is instead of uh, when that phone comes up and upgrading, we've had several phones around. Uh, you know, we have a family plan with my father and my, uh, my, my mother and father-in-law uh, and, and we'll kind of just pass phones around. You know, say, hey, this is actually in good shape. You go ahead and get a new one. Uh, Dad doesn't need to upgrade his because he's really not feeling the pinch or needs any of the new features or anything. So here, try this one. Uh, when we upgrade our iPhones, we're thinking of passing our 3GSs down the line. Um, and then we don't have to worry about them being contracted. So if anything does come up, like, you know, this AT&T thing gives us kind of pause to, hey, maybe I'll consider the other guys like Verizon. Um, which is, a, you know, a, of course, a bigger argument there. Uh, but that opens you up if you're not always tied down to that and always getting a new phone. Just because your contract is up doesn't mean you need a new phone. Um, unless you're in this I Apple cycle where we just want it, man. You yep. know. Uh, that's how they get you. It's, that's how they got us. Like, oh, wow, my bill's past due and I'm leaking into my overtime, overage minutes, but I can't find my data. Thank you, AT&T, for changing your site yet again. So. <laughs> It's on your phone. It's on my phone. Yeah, but yeah. not like past past months, is it? And my phone died. So yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> but no, I'm uh, usually hovering around a gig and a half to two gigs. Last I knew. So, but I do a lot of streaming. Like I'm I'm streaming either Pandora or Twit when I'm I'm you know going on commutes, going on rise of the shoots, uh, where, wherever I end up. So I mean that that adds up a little bit. So, but uh, but yeah, go AT and T. Um, I don't know, this just lends to the, the whole idea that no, nobody's really unlimited anymore. I'm kind of waiting for the day where my Fios decides to have a cap, and that's going to be a big problem considering how much Netflix and Hulu I watch on my Xbox in HD. So, yeah. Uh, moving on, let's see. Um, hey, Zadiva is getting shut down. I still have two credits left on them. I did, oh, no. I did watch a movie with Zadiva. Uh, for those that don't know, Zadiva is a service where, uh, as we surmised with uh, Cindy Klosky, uh, a few episodes ago. Apparently, they're just a rack of DVDs. They're all hooked up to the internet, and you rent that DVD player and a DVD for a moment while uh, 
while uh, and, 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 and watch the streaming. Uh, <laughs> apparently, a, a court uh, has has deemed that illegal and is there, they're going to be shut down. As I, I checked them earlier today, the, sh- the site is still up. So I might be watching some movies while I'm editing the show tonight to try to get them in. So... Rest in peace, you Rest DVD robot. It's not a bad service. I watched a really cool documentary that I didn't find anywhere else. It's not on Netflix, uh, called Card Subject to, Taint, to Change. And uh, it the, the quality was really good. And uh, you, you go, you hit the play button, you see it fast-forwarding through all the previews and going to the menu. So, but apparently I say it's illegal. So, moving on from that. Due to what? Like an FBI regulation? Um, it says it takes away from... The subscription services like Netflix. That's not illegal, though. That's what it said. That's it. Yeah, that's that's uh that's the movie companies, you know, closing in on that. Because what's the diff- Really, what is the difference between that? I guess they consider it a broadcast. That's got to be it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's unauthorized broadcast because they are they are streaming the movie regardless and getting money for it. That's not going directly to. The, uh, the 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 movie industry without a deal in place because literally all they did was I, I swear these guys just ran to Walmart, bought a bunch of DVDs, stuck them in these players for people to rent. So it was an interesting way around. Hopefully around what they were uh, worried about with the copyrights. It says Judge John Walter said Zadiva's unlicensed business model threatened the development the subscription video on demand market, which includes services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Hulu Plus. However, Zadiva claimed it was a virtual video store u- utilizing the first sale doctrine that allows the owner of a legally made copy of a movie to resell or rent it. So that's the argument going on. But Zadiva didn't win with that argument. Where's the? Uh, is it being done in California? I don't know. It doesn't say. Hmm. But yeah. A uh, comment that was brought up in the chat room. Uh, Chilla asked what the iCloud will do to your uh, to your AT and T unlimited plan. Oh, it'll destroy it. And that's what yeah. I was, I was just kind of because I was just looking at my iCloud usage. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I know I've up- updated like five gigabytes to it, and I, I'm constantly pushing pictures to the uh, the uh, photo screen without me really I, knowing to it. Knowing. I have my photo screen turned off. I'm currently using 0.5 gigs of my iCloud storage. And uh, that's about it. It, it. it isn't actually using. I think when we get to um, when iTunes Match launches, mm-hmm. it'll, that'll introduce new problems. But for now, it would seem that iCloud actually does not have any effect on your network data. Uh, Chilla says that he pushed 1.6 gigabytes the other day from his iPad and didn't even realize it. It pushed all of his PDFs and iBooks. Oh yeah. That that that's going to be an issue. I think I think when this stuff comes out, when iOS 5 comes out to the the main market people are gonna people are gonna kind of question that you know or people are gonna get caught with it basically oh, come on. you know so what are you playing Jaji? i'm not playing anything i'm trying to load this tetris article oh, okay okay um but anyways moving on from there we're putting document screwed it up <laughs> Chachi has a whole line of video game stuff we'll get to here in a little bit um oh i didn't put this in who uh what's going on with spotify guys so, uh, the software companies or software developers mm-hmm. have uh, developed a few, uh, basically, plugins for Spotify okay. that automatically mutes the ads. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh. So, you're, you're sitting there, you're listening to your free music account, you have this pro- one of these programs running. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you get 30 seconds of silence. You don't have to listen to anything. So it just mutes the ad. It doesn't take it away. No, it just mutes it. I still have a break in my music. Right. But it's well, a- you know, my, my biggest problem with the Spotify ads is that the... Well, there's like the handful of ads that are like, why don't you buy Spotify Premium? Please give us your money. And then there's the other ones where, let's say, hypothetically, I'm listening to Bluegrass. The ad will be a sudden transition into a song that's like alternative new country. Yeah. And that actually, that's the terrible example. It'll be like dubstep. <laughs> I like dubstep, but I'm currently listening to bluegrass. Why are you advertising dubstep to me? You have the information at your fingertips. You know what music I like. You have my iTunes library available in the application. 
And you can't put two and two together and say that you might be wasting your advertising dollars? Yeah, yeah, and I understand. Like, I'm listening to a rock channel, and I'll get an advertisement for, uh, what, you know, what, Miller Lite's alternative station on Pandora. That makes sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just, like, so off-base. I don't mind being advertised to, and heck, if you want to, like, play a band that I've never heard of mm. that's in the same genre that I'm currently listening to, go for it. Maybe I'll like it. But if you're just going to fly so far off-base... I, yeah, I'd be really into a plugin that just muted it because it's just irritating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or are they, are they trying to uh, annoy everybody into, into paying for the service? It's making me not want to use it and go back to Pandora is what it's doing. Although, I'll tell you what Pandora is doing to me these days. Every station I get is turning into Sesame Street. <laughs> what? What? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. So I had a cake station. You know, cake. Yeah. Um. Uh, and uh, it was pretty good for a while. I got some cake, got some back in there, random things. And then it slowly progressed, and then suddenly I'm hearing Elmo over the speakers in my studio. And so I click the little the little drop down thingy, and I click the option that says like, "Why do you play? Why did you play this?" And it said that I enjoyed kid friendly music. <laughs> so, so as a test, uh, because also cake kept showing up in all of my other stations. So as a test. Uh, we started a Lil Wayne station. We're like, if Cake randomly shows up in Lil Wayne, we know there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Cake didn't show up in Lil Wayne, but it only took 48 hours of a gorilla station for me to hear, like, a, and it's not just one song. It's not like one Elmo song. It was, <laughs> it was like, let's count the duckies with Uncle Tom, followed by I'm So Grumpy by Big Bird. <laughs> okay, Rob. Uh, me, uh, uh, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Rob, let me put this out there. Yeah? First off, I would like to congratulate you on being super talented. I don't know how you did that. I have a Avenue Q uh -huh. and a musical, like a, a a musical channel on Pandora, like Sound of Music. Yeah, and I've yet to get anything from Sesame Street. I didn't even know really? it was on there. I was I was amazed when I found out that there was Disney stuff on it. I have a Disney channel. You have a Disney channel. I think Missy has a Disney channel, yeah. too. And I've yet to get a Sesame Street song, ever. My favorite part is when I thumbs down the Sesame Street music. This is a heck of a rat hole, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I thumbs down the Sesame Street music. And the next song it plays will be like... Uh, everything on the station is like gorilla stuff. So it'll be like some like deep acoustic ambient techno track because I like kid friendly music. It'd be like nine inch nails because I like kid friendly music. Wow. Yeah. It does seem like sometimes Pandora gets stuck on certain things like that. Like I'll get a loop of like, apparently all I'm listening to today is Rob Zombie and Power Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, or, or, or disturbed or, or somehow my rock channel turned into techno so, randomly. Um, but what are you? What about you, uh, Justin and Sean? You, are you using services like this for your music uh, uh, acquisition? I guess. For me, I, I usually use Pandora, especially when it comes to you know just general house music. I, I've turned off the radio because there are too many commercials, at least for my my taste. Mm -hmm. But I have yet to run into any kind of uh, Sesame Street happy time, and I, I as well have an Avenue Q. Uh, soundtrack on my Pandora, but nine out of ten flogging Molly will will not draw Sesame Street or anything for the light. <laughs> <laughs> I think the day it does is the day I stop using it. That, that's my call. What about you, Justin? I think Justin's sleeping. Oh, what's ha what happened to Justin? Is Justin fall asleep? No, no. Justin, Justin's audio is not working. Oh. Let me shake him. Shake him. Hey there. Hi. Hey, oh. there he is. Hey. Sorry. Is that, I... that, is that a mute button? It was the mute button in case the dog went ballistic, yeah. Oh. No, we're safe. Okay. Uh, no, I really don't use uh, Pandora all that much. Uh, and I do have a Spotify account that I haven't done anything with yet either. Uh, I guess I'm just an old school iTunes kind of guy to make sure I don't get any Sesame Street unless I want it. That's yeah. good. I do. I do want it. Control I your Sesame Street. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Wow. Maybe yeah, it's just uh, every I'll, algorithm I'll tell you, there's nothing leads quite you like, back to Sesame like, Street. Like, like it's such a basic please. algorithm, it has to show up. Yeah, and there's nothing quite like having like a really long week where everybody's been working like 12-hour days on very complex problems, 
and then sunny days comes <laughs> over the studio speakers. I want to start. I am seriously going to. And then I know that they have Sesame Street music. I want to start a station on sunny days and just see where it goes. If it leads back over to Nine Inch Nails. Um, that would be impressive. That would Maybe be that's really what awesome. I need to do. I need to start with Sesame Street and see if I can get it to not play Sesame Street. <laughs> wow. Which really means when you get that conversion Sesame Street, when you get like, you know, like Guar covering something like, like a Bert and Ernie song. That's what you want to find. <laughs> that, that's that's the that's your thesis right there. Challenge accepted. <laughs> if anybody, you know, it, Chachi, this could be for you. If you want to make a Sesame Street makeout station, Ooh. that could be good too. Yeah. You know, a little Marvin Gaye followed by a little Elmo. Yeah. Get her in the mood and keep her there. Challenge Wink. accepted. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So my challenges are to get from. Sesame Street to Guar, back to Marvin Gaye. And Is then that what no, I'm gonna start two. I'm taking it as two different challenges. Okay, okay. And then I'm gonna go from Marvin Gaye to see if I can you get Sesame Street. You are gonna break Pandora. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna break gonna that algorithm. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, yeah. So, speaking of algorithms, you can buy the original. Uh, Sega Master System Tetris cartridge. Wait, wait, algorithms? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, guys. I, I just I got a, a message on my picture phone. Okay. Uh, and it said that uh, somebody just saw me on the television on Awesome Cast 56. Nice! Nice. Heck yeah, public access TV. <laughs> You're Wayne's World famous, man. <laughs> oh, party on, Wayne. <laughs> That's awesome. So for those that don't know, they've been uh, playing uh, episodes of our show with permission. It's not like they stole them. PCTV21.org if you want to see the schedule for that. Uh, no, I had like an inter- uh, apparently an intern for for somebody I was work- giving footage to said, Hey, I saw that guy on the TV last night talking about Mac versus PC. And I'm like, oh, yeah, so those are on. So uh, they nicely, I think, paired us on Wednesday nights after Unsung, yeah. Chachi show, my show. So, so like we have our own primetime block on 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 primetime. I know. On, on Taking Wednesdays. over. I'm in prime time. I've made it to the top. <laughs> and uh, and now and now Rob and I too. Of so. Public access. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to interrupt you. It's all right. It's no, all right. It's okay. Anyways, where were we? Tetris. Um, Tetris. I don't know how that transition Sega works. Master System. I should have went with the password story. Yes. Yeah. Start it. No. What? What is... Um, anyways, and, Tetris. Anyhow, so Tetris, uh, you can buy the original Sega Master Drive Genesis for us Americans. Cartridge. I thought, no, it was the Master System. That was... The Sega Mega Drive. Oh, Mega Drive. That is the Genesis. Yes. yes. For the low price of $1 million, signed by the creator... Nice. Yes. Alexi. And it is kind of a rare cartridge Mm -hmm. because you can't get Tetris for Sega in this country. Yeah, they never released it here. I think Nintendo had exclusive rights to the the, the American Tetris. Right. So. So it was unavailable here. You had to import it. And most people didn't do that now. I didn't even know that they they released one for. Right. For that. Me either. Which country was that? Mega Drive. That's uh, Japanese. That's Japanese. Uh, it's Japan. Me- it was Mega Drive everywhere but here, I believe. Yeah. So, so yeah, one million dollars. You can get an original in package autographed Sega cartridge Tetris. Hmm. Now, I think I think everybody here has had their Tetris period, right? Well, there is a there's a point in every young boy's <laughs> life. Yeah. <laughs> I told my dad the first time I had my Tetris period, and uh, we had a long talk on the beach. We're, we're both okay now. <laughs> you know, uh, if I can redeem myself from that comment. Wait, wait, what are you saying, what are you saying Sean? I said I haven't had my Tetris period in about three or four weeks. I may be pregnant. Oh. It's, it's a shock to us all. And this is why we're in prime time. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> No, uh, have you guys ever seen the uh, podcast Play Value? No, no, I haven't seen this. Play Value is, uh, I believe they've discontinued it now, but it was really good when it was on. It's a video podcast, bunch of uh, computer expert geeks in front of a green screen talking about the hidden history of video games since the very beginning. They got like 20 episodes out of it. Wow. Uh, it was the history of like the the unsung story of uh, how they created Pong and how they created Ms. Pac-Man and how they, they created have, uh, all the vintage games, why the Sega Dreamcast tanked completely, things oh, like that. Wow. Oh, wow. And they, is... they did a Tetris episode in which they revealed that 
uh, because it was created in the Soviet Union, there was no copyright protection. So mm-hmm. anybody could make copies of Tetris and call it theirs. And this guy never made a dime. No wonder he's charging a million dollars now for his signature. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 Number wait, wait, episode wait, wait, 19, Tetris, Splitting the Iron Curtain. It is available. I'm seeing it here what on Pod. It it's a uh, play value. Huh. It's a uh, uh, two words play value. I'm, I'm seeing it here on Podbean.com. I'll probably have to. This uh, is. Uh, I will probably be loading these on my iPod tonight. Oh, probably. Yeah. Yeah, they're very addictive. I oh. thought I would watch one, and I blew through all of them in like one night. And this is video. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they have audio versions? Uh, they do. It's called Turn Off the Video. Yeah. <laughs> Smart ass. Yeah. But yeah. um. It's not just for the guy's signature. And Justin's right. The guy never made a dime because of the copyright produc- mm-hmm. uh, protection. Mm-hmm. But um, it's not just for the guy's sign- signature. It's for the actual cartridge that you couldn't get here. That wasn't available in yeah. a lot of other places. I, I have a feeling if it was you know over there, it was a limited run. Right. If, if, if that was the case. Just like you can't find too many of the Tetris Tension versions that were two players and actually better than the Nintendo version. Right. I actually have a pricing guide for this stuff. Of course you do. I, it's all like uh, what individual uh, Nintendo games are worth. And, like, this is just going to start a rant. Who published but, that? Is that from Wizard? <laughs> <laughs> Beckett? No, is it, is uh, it Beckett Price Books? No, exactly. I, I don't remember who published it. But I, let me just say that all you video game sellers on Craigslist and eBay... And all these other online markets, that $25 that you're charging for a complete Mario 1, 2, and 3 set with no books and no boxes Mm -hmm. is worth crap. Mm-hmm. Stop you trying to rip people off. You can't drop thirty bucks on a cartridge that was included with every system, or that sold like, yes. the most copies out of any game. You know, I remember back in the day when I had my NES, and it was the best thing ever. I would go to Kmart on the weekends with my mom, and I could buy a used game for five dollars. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's the free market. You're right. It is the free market. Even though they were giving these things away for free 25 years ago, if you can't get one now, you'll be willing to pay 35 bucks for it or or a million. Or you you go to the GameStop (laughs) thing where if you don't know where else to find used games and all you have is a GameStop in your neighborhood, you don't know you can get stuff online for a lot cheaper, you're going to pay that GameStop price. which is You know, Mike, there's only one person who has this problem. Me. No, it's that that guy that lives in Nebraska. (laughs) I, you know, I'm starting to feel bad for these people in Nebraska that you keep ripping on. We well, can, that's nobody why we're will ripping send on us them. any emails except for people who have been on the show. Hi, AJ. Uh, so I'm really I'm trying to anger somebody. Oh, okay. But, this um, is like an episode of Ghost Hunters. Just send Rob into a room to yell at the dead and see if they respond. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are some Nintendo games that are worth what people were charging. Yeah, yeah. But, but just because the Zelda cartridge was gold doesn't mean it's worth $100. Exactly. Especially when you're missing two out of the three things it came with. Yeah. I, or, or like, uh, some of those Final Fantasy games were pretty crazy priced, but some of them are really rare and Japanese and who knows what else. If they're both rare and Japanese, that's the selling point for me. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, but, you know, it, these people are doing that because there were there are people that don't know anybody that will buy them at these prices. I know, and I feel bad for those people. Considering you can go to any reseller of video games and get all three of the, the Mario games for $3 plus tax. Gotcha, you need to preach the, the gospel and, 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 <laughs> and learn these people. But, I mean, there are some games we'll like... We'll move to uh, Canada. Yeah, Chachi. Canada. With your socialist video game tactics. Nebraska. You know what? I'm going. That's it, Rob. I'm going to Nebraska. Yeah. I'm oh, setting no. up. I'm setting up a. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna road trip to, to Nebraska. save them from themselves. Yes, I'm. I'm going to Nebraska, <laughs> and I'm gonna. Int- I'm gonna take the internet to them. Well, I mean, I was gonna say, tell me how it goes, but you'd probably have to send me a telegram. Yeah, I'm gonna drive to Kansas City to do that. <laughs> Bring a pulpit and a platypus. <laughs> pulpit and a platypus. <laughs> you know, platypi are water-based creatures, and I feel bad for one in Nebraska. That is true. I'll, I'll have to take a swimming pool. And some <laughs> now we're talking world tour. Okay, and, I'm with you now. And some heat lamps. Oh, man, we got to get a bus for this. 
the char- the Chaji Platypus Express. <laughs> yeah, it'll be amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm sure the Oscar Mayer Wiener is rentable, so you could just put a platypus in that and drive to Nebraska. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of eggs out of the bag. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Speaking of Nintendo and their awesome uh, uh, decision making, uh, the Nintendo 3DS. Hey, Josh, only a hundred and seventy dollars now. What's two fifty? All right, well, hold on. First, first. Yes, yes. Let's point out that uh, if you go out and buy it now, you're losing. Yes. So if you buy it now for the two hundred fifty dollars, it's still available for. Yes. Now, do you see what you get if you do buy that before they drop the price? This it's, is really weird. Well, they're rewarding. They they realize that they made a mistake. Okay. Uh, Nintendo realizes that the 3DS is not selling as well as they thought it did because mm-hmm. of the $250 price tag. A little pricey, a little pricey, especially when, you know, you can pay the same and have an iPod Touch or whatever, which well, has not only that, games. But it's n- not that great of a system. Okay. And... Well, okay, and it's not that great. It's every bit at least as good as a DS or DSi or whatever you had last. Right. Um, it does all that stuff. It plays all those games. It has the new ones that that decidedly are more powerful. It has this 3D, you can say, gimmick. Maybe that's not why you want to buy a new one. Right. Uh, and you, But you have a virtual console with Nintendo and, and uh, Game Boy, uh, old Game Boy games. Right, and that's the only reason to buy it now. Okay. You, no one, I mean, all right, let me clarify. People are buying, were buying this at first for the 3D. Mm-hmm. Okay. To see what it's like. Yeah, to see and what it's like. And then all of their friends got it, and they saw that the 3D was horrible, so right. these people no longer buy it. Exactly. So, Nintendo is not making the money they thought they were going to make on this. Uh, well, we didn't We didn't finish. Uh, if you do buy this at the $250 mark before they do there. drop it. We're getting there. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, it, it came out. It was $250. Uh, one friend in a group of 10 bought it, said, whoa, this is crap. No, don't waste... Two hundred fifty dollars on it, and so they didn't. Uh, but they're going to drop the price, okay? And they're going to make it worth it to the ones that did go out and pay overpay for this, okay? You, you get twenty free games from the uh, Virtual Console, which includes all the classics, uh, Zelda, the Mario games, uh, things like that from NES, and then you get. Uh, 10 from the Game Boy Advance Virtual Console, which is all of the re-releases from the Game Boy Advance. And the ones that go out and pay $170 for it don't get this. Mm-hmm. But really, okay, what's that price difference? Like $80? Yeah. Am I, am I seeing that right? Yes. So, I mean, and these are, what, $5 a piece games? Right. So I mean the math isn't really there. No, <laughs> but <laughs> but at least they give you something. Yeah, but um, you're getting something for overpaying. But I don't know. It, it, this could be just a hiccup in it for Nintendo. Nintendo usually uh, does pretty good living off of like what we got Kid Icarus and we had a Link remake, and I'm sure there'll be a Mario game somewhere down hey, the line. Hey Mike, hey mm. Mike, what's up? Remember, uh, remember when you had this talk a couple months ago, and I said that Nintendo was ultimately doomed because they're running out of people who used to play Zelda, and there are things like the the iPhone and the iPad. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much around to it. <laughs> so, I mean, they're gonna they gotta keep making these plays with these like pretty. They say they're trying to change the game with like the Wii and 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 the three D and everything, but they're gonna run out of people that just are gonna buy into that, you know. Mm-hmm. And everybody's gonna run out and get the new Wii because they're already, you know, impressed or had and you know got sick of the original Wii. And uh, I don't know. I, I think I think it may be down the line. We'll see them go the Sega route. But yeah. sorry, I'm gonna cry. You're gonna cry. <laughs> you don't want to see Nintendo go. No. I don't know about that. I would argue that if you can still keep making the old characters interesting to new audiences, you're okay. Because Nintendo isn't really in the video game business anymore. They're in the storytelling business. Mm-hmm. As long as they can keep telling interesting stories with those same characters that they own, uh, they have a fighting shot. Whereas Sega never had anything other than Sonic, but, which was its own problem. But are they Boom. are they really doing that, though? Because, I mean, no, what's, what's the last Wii game you got excited about? I want to say Metroid Fusion, and I, I didn't get a chance to play it. Uh, then we get like Mario Golf, Mario Baseball, Mario Basketball, whatever else, uh, Wii Music, 
Like they're, they're they don't seem like they're they're capitalizing on on the characters they should be. Her, no, I feel like they're stuck in between. They're they're trying to figure out can we be both uh, a character licensing monolith yeah. and innovators technologically. You don't need to do both. Just do one really well. If you try and do both, you'll cut yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then and then, uh, but then are they wasting money with the R and D for doing something so completely different, like the Wii U, great name, or the three DS, or whatever else they have down the line? Especially when you have stuff like the Kinect out there, right? Which seems to have eclipsed them in uh, in uh, you know uniqueness. Well, if they can afford to burn some R and D money just to force their competitors to stay competitive, that's fine. But if mm -hmm. they're banking their entire future on always being the innovators, that's not really what their bread and butter is anymore. Yeah, no, you're, you're going to lose eventually. In the, in that case, it, I mean, they should. As much as it pains me to say this, but they should stick with the form factor. What do you mean? Follow what everyone else is doing. Okay. Like so. as far as I mean, but don't don't flat out copy what everyone else is doing, but release a console. And don't make me use a <laughs> you're, stick. You're you're in the I don't want to move right. category still. So yes. that's, that's 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 give one me thing. the controller. Like the Xbox controller. <laughs> give me that. Let me sit give on my me, couch and give play me video something games. something I can wrap my hands around. I believe what... Well, Mike, <laughs> now that you say that, well, I do believe that a third of all American children are diabetic and overweight, so I don't think they'll be moving anytime soon. So Nintendo probably has at least a good two generations left of dominance. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go exactly so well anyways on that note it is time for us to wrap it out uh justin Aww. and sean i want to thank both of you for for uh for dropping by uh of course you're the baristas.com to see uh what you're gonna have a new clip or episode or whatnot every monday right yep yep get ready we've got uh, nine all new episodes coming up that will change the game and if you don't know what the game is get caught up you've got 11 episodes to get through uh and they're all so awesome you might be <laughs> and what else you got going on out there, Justin? Uh, boy. Well, Mike, you and I also do a show called Freelance for Real every mm -hmm. Tuesday in which we talk about being freelancers, which is everything else that I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I'm not doing both of those things, uh, I'm taking naps, lots of them. Well, you know, there is something to be said about a great nap. Not even anything uh, suggestive. I know. No, 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 they're just pretty awesome. Sean Starkey, he's Sam over on the Breezes. Uh, you got anything coming up you want to plug? Um, nothing jumps to mind. I'm just uh, baristas, baristas, baristas. And uh, if anybody's out in the Monroeville area and they want to see some good Shakespeare, come down to uh, see some poor Yorksplayers.com. They'll give you some directions and it'll be some good show. Some outdoor Shakespeare is always good. That's poor Yorksplayers.com? Poor Yorksplayers.com, yep. All right. And uh, Ch Chachi, Chachi, you have a new episode of Unsung just went up this week, I and do? Uh, you got all uh, you got all dinosaur crazy on the last episode of Chachi says. I did. Um, yeah, Unsung came out on Monday, episode mm -hmm. seven um, from Southside Works. So you can go watch that at Pittsburgh on Video dot org mm -hmm. and continue making those videos the most viewed videos on the channel. Yep. I was amazed. I, I poured it up. It was uh, episode six was still number one. End of last week before we posted this one on Monday. Right, which I was, was going to climb to number one. So it says something that I mean they keep climbing to number one. Um, on Chachi says the vidcast, you can watch me read a ridiculous, um, anger-filled comic book from a Baptist church in some <laughs> area that starts with a B, with some fictional story on how the dinosaurs disappeared and oh that thing yeah yeah, yeah we did that yeah we i read that. that rob that's good it angered me <laughs> all that is that chachi says dot net of yes. course in his video game blog yeah, is yeah. still going yes yeah, so i'm um, on game 63 of 1001 which is <laughs> which i figured I, I tried to figure out with math when we all know i'm good, not good at that but it's not even a whole percent yet <laughs> I'm still at a fraction of, of percent. Hey, you got a life goal now. Yeah. Hey, you're good. You're good for a while. You don't need anything else to work on. Rob no. De La Creta coming at us from a seedy hotel room in uh, Baltimore. Um, it's not seedy. <laughs> it looks rather clean, actually. <laughs> it, it's, it's pretty, I've got a lovely view of an alley. <laughs> 
on the second floor, and I can definitely see a row of cars. You're not you're not downtown, are you? I am. Well, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm unfamiliar with the terminology of Baltimore. I am an inner harbor slash downtown. You're not at the Days Inn, are you? No, I'm okay. At the, that's where I just. That's where I just booked my uh my my, my place. I'm at the Hilton. The have Hilton. You, uh, that's right. Have you run into any street walkers yet? Yeah, you seem to, uh, you seem to find them wherever you go. I, it happened once. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the past but, uh, month, everywhere you went. If if I see Justin Kaunaki in a tight red dress, I'll let you know. All right. Okay. That's that's all I care about. <laughs> if you see me in a tight red dress, let me know, Rob, because I'll be concerned about myself. <laughs> well, and wouldn't we game. all? Wouldn't we all? Of course. And also check out podcamppittsburgh.com. Uh, you can go register, and you can submit yes. your uh, session if you want to attend. Yes. Come. Hey, yes. You can. You can show up. You can hang out with me, <laughs> or you can hang up with people more awesome than myself, like Rob. Uh, or you can teach us stuff in your own special little session. Mm-hmm. Something, something, something 101 or 201 or 1402 or whatever you want to call it. And it's free. It's free. Free. It's going to be at Point Park College in downtown Pittsburgh. Right. Uh, with free food. Yes. Yeah, free with and, free food. And uh, we are going to bring back the awesome cast live on Sunday. Yes. Of that, uh, of that fine weekend. So, uh, we had a lot of fun doing the last week, the last week, last year. It was like last week. So we can't get too drunk. So we can't Saturday get too drunk. Sa- yeah, we'll, we'll probably continue. We'll just hair of the dog right before the show. <laughs> It'll be fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> Chachi's still deciding if he's going to have pants on during the show, which I don't know how that'll work at Point Park, but, uh, you know. You know. So, uh, well, guys, hey, and you can uh, contact us. Uh, check us out, awesomecast.com, or drop us an email at contact at awesomecast.com or 724 25 ACAST, 724 252 278. I mean, you can chime in just like uh, AJ does, who's been on the show, because he tells us that listening on audio is like having one good eye. I can't see 3D with my ears. I'm not angry. I just like correcting enthusiastically. So <laughs> you, you, can, you can submit something witty like that yourself. Any, any time. <laughs> I'm Sorg. You check me out at Sorgatron.com. Check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com uh, for some of the fine, fine podcasts that we do. The and we'll see you guys next week. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. That is that awesome. That is disturbingly clear. That is awesome. <laughs> it's like you're sitting here eating in my ear. That's a Zoom H2, folks. Uh, leading microphone for what? For, uh, for public eaters? <laughs> public eaters. This mic has been out since like 2003 or something like that, and it's still like number one seller in all random music catalogs. Let's see. Platypus Evolution. Oh, wait, there's a good one. Oh, yeah. Eat it. I just think it's really crunchy in here. Oh, here it is. The call of a platypus. Yes. I've never heard a platypus make a noise before. This is the thing that's going to set the tone for Chachi the rest of the night. That's not right. No, hold on. I got to start the video over again. <laughs> That is so wrong. <laughs> In case you're wondering what a platy- what noise a platypus makes. They're extremely awkward on land. <laughs> <laughs> and not exactly graceful in the water. <laughs> Honestly, the platypus is just really fucking retarded. This can only be found in the rivers, streams, and lakes along the east coast of Australia. Damn it! I gotta go to Australia. But they range as far north as northern Queensland, all the way down to the southern island of Tasmania. That's quite a range for these little creatures.
but there are gaps between crotch populations. Cam. Large tracts of land, wait, wait, the show us, and lakes show us make on the it difficult cam. I am. for the planet to migrate yeah, from one area it's on YouTube. to another. Researchers believe it's possible that isolated pockets of animals could have evolved differently. Could even be separate subspecies. Whoa! The interesting things about platypus are that as you come up the coast from Tasmania, they get smaller. What? As well as that, the, so the body size is actually less in some of the northern ones. So the maximum weight for one in this area is somewhere in the region of a kilogram, about two and a half pounds. Whereas they're around about three times that weight in Tasmania. Stefan Kolomeyats from James Cook University is using genetic material to determine gene All right, flow I gotta make sure Sean's good to here. Another. Sean, uh, are you there? Me. Can you hear me? Okay. I, I, I want a platypus. I want to know what the legality of owning a platypus is. Yeah. We can work with that. We can definitely work with that. Like BBC from the front lines, World War Two. <laughs> and oh my God, that's horrible. And go. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Hitler's taking over everything. Yeah, I sound like Theo. <laughs> <laughs> I've been punched in the face by everyone. What do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> oh.